Alright guys, so this is going to be a full tutorial for the All Vaults category. There are a couple things I want to go over before diving into the tutorial that will help you with your introduction to All Vaults. First off, I'd recommend having a 100% file set up so you can run through all the levels, practice using your Master Thief abilities, especially fast. Second, I would highly recommend learning Claw Grip on your controller. Claw Grip will allow you to have way more control over your camera and movement, especially with the fast ability. Now, it is worth noting that this tutorial is for the PS2 disc version of the game. If you have a remaster version, your strats will be different compared to the strats shown off in this tutorial. Now, you have two route options here in Paris. The first one, and the easier of the two, but also slower, is you can go casually through police headquarters. But you're also able to just skip the cutscene anyway here going up this water tower by running to the right jumping off this antenna and going across the blue stealth auras and then continuing into police headquarters this way. But you can save about 10 seconds by doing a super jump chain here. And if you're going to go this route, there's two things you got to know. The first is how to super jump and I recommend re learning this regardless. Super jumping is such an important piece in learning this speed game. So, what a super jump is, is basically sliding your thumb over square and then X while jumping. Doing so at the right timing will make it so you don't update your ground position. And you have about a six frame window for each jump if you're doing the slide thumb over square and then X. It is possible just to do it by pressing X, but the frame window is cut in half from six to three. So what you want to do is slide your thumb over square and then X and it looks something like this. And you'll notice that you don't see a dust cloud under Sly's feet. That tells me I'm doing the trick correctly and the game has no idea where Sly is. Where here, you'll notice that I'm actually waiting a bit longer and you'll notice a dust cloud under Sly's feet. That will tell me that I'm dropping my super jump and the game is updating Sly's ground position every time I land on the ground. Now, for this super jump chain, I start from here at this air vent. Do not super jump past this air vent, otherwise you will end up missing the super jump chain and end up landing a bit short over here. Another thing you're going to need to know for uh, doing this route is how to do periscope. Now periscope is pretty straightforward. Basically, right over here, there's a death plane blocking you from jumping over and falling down below and skipping a significant part of the level. But we can actually skip that by ledge grabbing up here, pressing X, double jumping around, and falling down over this way. The key part to keep in mind to get down here is you want to do your arched double jump and land on the far side. I'd recommend trying to do an extended double jump and really try and get as far to the left side as you can on that roof. Now when we fall down here, we continue that super jump and we want to fall into this part here. and this stuck spot can be a bit finicky and you'll notice right here Sly's trying to ledge grab like that the way to avoid that is swing your cane when falling in and hold your analog upright doing so will have you be able to get much more consistent stuck spots so just like we'd start any run time starts as soon as you click X on your load file so we'd start time right here and going for the super jump strat, again, remember, we don't want to super jump past that air vent. So as soon as we get here, start your super jump chain. We're going to continue this way. And you do not have to super jump off this antenna or off of the top roof part there. So we're going to double jump, ledge grab, jump across, fall down, super jump, and fall into the stuck spot. And again, hold upright on your analog stick. And again, that'll make it much more consistent for the stuck spot. Now, something to keep in mind with this vault. When you put in the combination, do first digit, last digit, middle digit. Doing so will give you more time to pause the game and not end up pausing too late and being stuck watching the cutscene and having to go through the level the casual way. Another thing worth mentioning is be sure to see Sly's hand move a little bit. You can actually hard lock because of how you pause on this vault on the final vault in the game. Basically, the rule of thumb is you want to make sure you see Sly's hand move just a little bit. As long as you see his hand move at all, you should be all right with the last vault. If you end up pausing too early, you're unable to get the final vault in the game. So again, we do first digit, last digit, 
and middle digit. And you see how Sly's hand moved slightly there? Because I saw his hand move, I know for a fact that that was correct, and I know I won't get a hard lock on the final vault in the game. So from there, we just want to load the same file we're running on, and we're going to continue to do the any percent route and just do Paris skip like normal. You don't need to do any super jump strat here. Continue this way. Double jump up. Get around that death plane. Fall down here. And then continue running through the rest of the level. And splitting here is totally up to you. Where I like to split is as soon as I see the fade out of the Cooper logo. As soon as it turns to black is when I split. So I split right about here. And then from there, you can skip the animated cutscene, go into the hideout, and continue into ASA. One of the most frustrating things about learning all vaults is just getting those bottle routes down. Bottle routes can save your life in this category and save you a ton of time because if you end up missing a bottle along your route through a level, you have to save your game, reload, go back through the entire level and find that one bottle you missed. So if there's anything you take away from this tutorial, it's that bottle routes are the most important thing about all vaults. Make sure if you're struggling with a split, throw back on the split you're struggling with in the tutorial video, rewatch it, hop on an offline practice file, and just keep running through the level until it makes sense to you because it'll make your life a whole lot easier and save you a huge headache later on. Now, there's two things I want to go over before we jump into ASA. The first thing is boost jump. Boost jump is a strat we're going to use about halfway through the level to gain more height to get out of bounds and save a couple seconds via movement. There is a backup strat to it if it's too hard for you, and I will show you when we get to that point. But for now, let me show you boost jump. Boost jump, you start from a ledge grab. And again, like I said, we're trying to get an extra jump to give us ourselves more height to get out of bounds in an area we weren't ordinarily supposed to make it to in the game. So what you do is coming from a ledge grab, your inputs are X and square. So you want to jump, square, pause. Doing so puts you in the super jump animation and basically instead of jumping and sliding your thumb from square to X, you want to slide your thumb from square to start. After doing so, you want to spam X three times, delay your fourth input, and then X again after delaying for about a second. And it will give you more height and it looks something like this. And you'll notice how much height I got off that. If I just double jump, you'll notice I don't get that high. Now, again, those inputs are X, 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 X. And you want to make sure that fourth one's delayed as well. So I'd recommend hopping on uh, ledge grab and practicing your boost jumps. A good place to practice is near the end of the lily pads in high class heist if you're looking to practice your boost jumps. Now, the second thing is sign proxy. Now, sign proxy, I like to stand on this bush face towards the sign and run at the first E and keep. Doing so will proxy you up in the air and you'll be able to land up here and get out of bounds. This will allow us to skip a cutscene down below. Now that cutscene can still be triggered from up here if you fall through this crack so be careful not to fall in. I like to double jump over if you don't want to risk the double jump just run around. Now continuing into the level we want to drop down by this boat down here, fall down on this bridge, get these two bottles and kill the guard. Now, coin count will matter later on just for getting coin charms. So if you like to keep a few extra coins, I'd recommend you hit this wheel, then break the mast. You'll get the bottles and you'll pick up a few extra coins along the way. Running back this way, you have two options. You can either do something called boost, uh, boat jump, not boost jump, sorry, where we jump from here all the way over to the platform over there. Now, if this jump is scary for you and you're having trouble with it, you can always run to the right and just continue up the bridge this way. But with boat jump, basically what you want to do is do an extended double jump where you don't jump until the very edge of the ledge here. So it looks like this. You'll notice how late I double jumped and I extended my jump a little bit as well. After getting across the edge here, you want to grab this bottle, cut to the right, and run towards the middle tree. Leave this bottle here for a second, run up here, grab this bottle, turn around, and grab this bottle here. Now, I briefly want to touch on cane jumping as well. Cane jumping is used throughout this run as well, and basically what it is, is when you're walking up a rope like this, when you latch off and re-latch on, as soon as you hear the audio cue for Sly latching onto the rope, you want to double jump. So it looks like this. And that'll give you more speed, distance, and height on all of your jumps, and it'll save you some time overall. After grabbing these two bottles here, we're going to drop down here and grab these. And this is also where we're going to do boost jump. 
So there is a guard here with a star, and he'll throw it as a projectile. You usually will be just fine if you jump, swing, hit this bottle, run to the left, and then grab this bottle here. He'll usually throw it at you along the way to the final bottle on this platform here. Now, from this statue, a tip that'll make boost jump easier is you want to land as far to the left as you can. And remember, X, 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 X. Make sure you delay that final X input. And doing so, you want to double jump up here, and that'll get us out of bounds for some out of bounds movement. So it looks like this. We drop down, we hit this bottle, the guard will throw, grab up here, pause, ledge grab, and run out of bounds here. Now, if you're struggling with boost jump, don't worry about doing that out of bounds movement. It only saves a couple seconds. What you can do is go down this way and do ASA CSS. And you can do the cutscene skip down there. And I'll link a video down in the description as well so you can see what that looks like as a backup strat. And it, again, it only loses a couple seconds. But when you're up here, the best way to know where to go is look for this really tall rock here. It's the one really tall rock on the right hand side of this out of bounds area. Hug to the right of it, double jump down, and you'll land by this guard here. Kill the guard and grab these two bottles hanging out down here. Be careful on these waterfalls as well. The moving water can very easily push you off the edge. Grab this bottle on the right, cut left, grab this one, and this cutscene here is unskippable. Nice so, so just sit through so and learn how to jump and hit the circle key, button. Now, coming up here, there's no bottles by these wheel cycles, so you can just continue through the level casually. Um, after these wheel cycle, or the first one here, there's going to be a trick called Valve Jump. And it's up to you if you want to do it. It only saves one and a half to two seconds. But basically what you do if you want to do Valve Jump is run against this gate here, and then you can jump over to that valve I'm looking at, the close one right there. Again, that only saves about two seconds, so if you're just a beginner learning, I'd recommend you just run this way, jump over here, and continue through the level like that. From here, you want to jump up on this pipe, up top on this pipe, and then you can cane jump over to these bottles here. You can grab these, cut this way, and start cane jumping over to the final two over here. Now you'll notice after grabbing these two bottles that we're going to be at 19 instead of 20. We have missed a bottle, but we've missed that bottle on purpose. Because what we're going to do is we're going to grab this key, we're going to go through the gate, immediately come back into the level, grab the final bottle right next to the vault, open the vault, and menu back into the hub world. Now the we reason we do the route this way is if we just open the vault right now after getting the final bottle, we'd have to sit through the cutscene, and the cutscene's very, very slow. So what we want to do is re-enter the level, and since we've triggered the hub world, we can pause from the vault after we've collected uh, the page from the Thievius Raccoonus, and just menu directly into the hub world. So we don't have to worry about watching the animation. So we grab the final bottle, and get into the vault combination screen here. Now... With exit level vaults, you are able to do last digit last, and I'll show you when we get to a vault like that later on. But if you're just a beginner, I highly recommend just doing middle digit last. It'll save a bunch of headaches and make putting in your vault combinations way easier. And it only loses frames. It's barely any time loss whatsoever. So here we want to do seven, do last digit last, or, la or last digit before the middle digit. And then when we put in this one, you'll see that autosave logo pop up and just like with skipping boss cutscenes at the end and menuing out or any other point in the game where we collect a key as soon as that autosave logo pops up that tells us that we've already gotten that page even though the vault hasn't opened yet the first frame that autosave logo pops up is already saved that we've ha we've gotten that ability so from here all we got to do is a view map into the hub world and then we can continue on to fire down below Alright, after coming out of ASA, you're going to spawn here in the hub world just like with any other category. Now, I'd recommend getting in the habit of pressing your triggers to make sure you have the dive ability and you don't continue on your run after possibly missing the vault. These pipes here can be a bit finicky and we use these to jump up to fire down below. Now, what I'd recommend you do, so when you land on this top one, I'd recommend you jump a little bit higher up, arch jump up. It's going to be a bit easier, 
than jumping d uh, up there from here. It is still possible, but it's a bit harder. And when you get up here, use dive to jump in the level. I'd also highly recommend getting used to using your Master Thief abilities. It'll give you a huge advantage in the category. And when you get in here, we're going to continue this way. We're going to grab these first two bottles. There is going to be a short cutscene here we're going to have to watch. And again, it is faster to watch this cutscene than loading and going back through. Just because of the length of the cutscene. Now when we get here, be careful, because there is a cutscene on the other end of this bridge. To avoid it, we're going to double jump to the right on top of that pipe. And it looks something like this. And when you get up here, be sure to hug the right wall, because if I just jump forward here, I can still trigger the cutscene. So jump to the right, loop around, and there's a bottle up top here. We want to jump and swing and hit that, break the coal, grab the bottles, ignore the guard, and jump up here on this platform. When we get on this platform, we're going to hit this bottle and jump across the pulleys all the way over here. You can use dive here to be a little bit faster. It doesn't save too much time. And then here, we just want to... Uh, I'm going to kill this guard just to better show this. I'd recommend you practice this. Uh, that guard will slowly come towards you when swinging this hammer, so be careful. Uh, to get up top here, instead of going up this pipe casually, we're able to uh, use our momentum off this hook to double jump up top. So what it looks, it looks something like this. And again, we just use our momentum to get up here from that hook. And I'd recommend you practice that. From here, we're going to jump across the pulleys in the opposite direction, grabbing these bottles. You can skip this platform by just jumping uh, directly across. It's not too bad of a jump. Again, if it's scary, you're welcome to just jump here and over. Then we're going to hit these furnaces. And of course, we're going to grab the charm. Continue through the level. There's two bottles up here, so we're just going to jump up top, grab these, cut left, grab these two bottles here. Then we're going to hug the left wall, ignore the guard just for a moment, get these bottles, collect some coins, hug the wall, grab this bottle, and then we kill the guard. Once we get here, jump up here immediately, start the turning thing, miss the uh, light there, and then we can jump back up again. The reason we want to do that is the cycle won't allow us to do it all in one, so we just got to be careful. And then as soon as you see that massive block of coal uh, come down here and land on this last platform, that's usually when I jump off because the platform will continue spinning for a little bit longer after you jump off. From there, you break this vault, come up here, get these two, and then instead of going to the right, we can actually make this jump just like that. Break the alarm, break only one of these bottles, Double jump, hit those two, and then on the way back, we can hit this last one. From here, uh, again, this is all vaults. We don't need to collect the keys, but it's actually faster to grab this key, load, and grab that vault near the final vault at the beginning here. Instead of just exiting the level and loading. So we're going to grab this final vault. I like to use dive here. Get a little bit closer. And now, this is a decision you should make yourself. You are able to do last digit last fairly easily with these vaults where you exit level from. This is an example of a level where we exit level. Now, if you're doing last digit last, the timing is a bit scarier. Basically what you want to do is as soon as you press your final input to move on this one, for example, the last digit is 9. So as soon as I press like that, where it kind of moves, that's where you want to pause. And then you click exit level, and then it'll continue from there on the fade out. Again, you don't have to do that, especially just starting out. I'd recommend doing middle last. So we want to do five, nine, seven. And with that, you have plenty of time just to pause. And from there, you just click exit level, and we continue on to ACD. After collecting that vault, we're going to click exit level. Now from there you want to hold up left on your analog and spam X. The reason being is we want to make sure we jump around that door and we want to make this cycle with this guard. We jump up here off the lamp, kill the guard and continue into ACD. If you end up being a bit slower and you don't make that cycle because it is a bit hard, trigger the guard here, hide behind the wall, hit him and then roll into the level. Again, roll will save time downhill or on flat surfaces, so I'd really recommend getting used to the mechanics of using roll. Roll will be your most important Master Thief ability until the 7th vault in the game, which again is fast. 
Now, when I get into ACD, a lot of people like to roll early here. I like to walk around the corner, and when I get to the straightaway, roll from there. We uh, we get a Bentley cutscene here. We're going to load, come back, and on the load back, we're going to hit these two bottles at the beginning because now the cutscene's gone. Uh, a small little tip with these barrels, instead of just jumping in, which can be a bit slow, if you're in the air, you can press circle, and it'll auto-lock you into the barrel. So keep that in mind when jumping in the barrel. From there... We're going to walk forward, get these two bottles here, land here, kill the guard. Now, this elevator can be a bit tricky because we're not going to use that uh, barrel through the rest of the level because it's very slow. We want to start our roll about halfway through the elevator. So it looks something like this. We walk about halfway, start our roll, bounce, continue your roll all the way through. Here, you want to trigger the guard, hide behind the table, bait a shot into the table, and then kill him. From there, we go backwards, hit this vault, roll forward, jump, hit that bottle, cane jump off the uh, the ladder there, hit these three, drop down, and you can jump across the top of this furnace, hit these bottles, then we cut left, hit these bottles, and you can do that all in one swing. So keep that in mind as well. From here, it's really easy just to roll right across this mat. If you roll and you're on the far left side, they will not shoot you. From there, hit this bottle, continue rolling to the right side, grab these, we go up the elevator, and again, I cannot stress enough, really practice using roll. Roll will save you so much time throughout World 1. From here, we want to just double jump on top of this right bookshelf. It's a bit difficult, so you want to kind of delay it. From there, we land, double hit, get that vault and then we want to slope jump up here now this can be a bit tricky because this bookshelf does move so practice your slope jumps and make sure you have them down from here we double jump up top go around and now here you have two options if you're uh, feeling a bit riskier a bit more experienced you can double jump over here but it has to be an extended double jump and make it directly to the bottles if you're scared and just learning the category for the first time I'd recommend you start with landing on this bridge right here which I will show for beginners sake so we just double jump over here and from there you can just roll grab these bottles immediately cut back roll this way it's okay if you trigger the dialogue or the uh, the siren there from there we want to land on top of this railing double jump ledge grab and from here jump across continue this way towards the final vault and that'll give you all 30 bottles and again this is a view map vault so I'd recommend doing uh, middle digit last so it's 242 and just like that we have the vaults, and you can see in the bottom right. Again, watch the autosave. Make sure you have those vaults. From here, we menu into the hub world, and we go on from there. After exiting ACD, you are on a psycho for this guard because we are going to do loogie lunge. Now, I'm going to briefly touch on loogie lunge. Uh, again, I just recommend you practice your slope jumps. Uh, there is a bit of a newer strat based on the one previously shown, so I'll make sure to explain that very quickly. So what we want to do is we want to jump up here, we want to double jump to the corner, pull the guard over, as soon as he passes, I'll cut this way. Now, when the guard st starts chasing, I wait till he starts walking forward at me to do a sloped double jump up the wall, and then you jump off his attack at you. So it looks something like this. And when you get up top, double jump around, land in here, and go into Gunboat Graveyard. Now in Gunboat, this level's pretty straightforward, mostly casual. We're going to get this vault, jump, hit these two, and again, really make sure you're focusing on using roll when you get the option to. Going to jump across, avoid these spotlights. You can trigger this one if you want. Just right along the way. Roll towards this vault right here. From here, you can do two cane jumps if you do it correctly. And make it over here nice and fast. If you have to take a third, it's really not a big deal at all. You can run into that laser, grab those two bottles. And if you're careful, you can jump around these spotlights. From the middle of the blue stealth auras, you can make sure you jump as well. It's a bit faster than walking across casually. 
Double jump over this guard's star throw attack because it can get scary. If you single jump, he can still hit you. From there, we got two bottles right here. Cut back, jump across, and all the bottles here will be on this last bit of the boat. Avoid the stars. And again, be very careful of this uh, BBJ guard. And up here, this is an exit level vault. So if you want to do last digit last, feel free. But the combo is 719. And from there, we can move on to the boss fights. After exiting Gunboat, we're going to continue to the boss fight here. So just like in any percent, we're going to do the super jump from the cannon. Make sure you avoid the invisible wall above that. We launch into the boss fights. Alright. After getting into the boss fights, you want to make sure you avoid Raleigh's hits, of course, just like any other category. If you're not too familiar with other categories in the game, make sure you double jump and hit Raleigh at the peak of your jump, and you should be able to save a couple seconds on every attack he does. And again, he does five bounces. And on this next phase, it's five platforms. Three, four, and five. And then on his final phase, he's going to do six tongue swings. And from there, you want to make sure you view map and menu to the hub world. So pause, view map, and menu to the hub world. All right, after exiting Raleigh, we're going to roll to into the machine. Now, we got to remember that we are on a cycle here for this first bottle, so be careful there. What we're going to do is we're immediately going to use roll at this bottle here, double jump, hit, and then we're going to continue using roll on flat surfaces, jump off the right railing, land on the moving platform, the piston, whatever you want to call it, and continue from there. If you end up missing that bottle, missing the cycle, it is hard, remember. Don't worry. You can just wait for the piston to go down, and you'll be able to get it in just an extra few seconds. From there, we're going to continue up this way, and you got two options here for this bottle. Either jump, hit the bottle here, or if you feel safer doing this, you can go across the blue stealth auras. Either way is fine. Now, you can roll on these moving platforms. Just be very, very careful. Up here, something worth noting is... Using a uh, jump off of these platforms will give you much more control of Sly and much more consistent bounces. Uh, another thing worth noting, when I come out of this first section of the, the furnaces, there is uh, an electric fan cycle that I have to make. Now, you're welcome to wait through those cycles. It is a bit scary at first. Otherwise, you can try and copy my movement, but it's kind of hard to show slowly because it is cycle-based. So, it's up to you which way you want to go. You can use roll to bonk off that or just fall down. It really doesn't matter. From here, you can use roll to avoid these fans. And again, it's all practice and timing. It gets easier the more you play. From there, we climb the rope. Make sure you're careful of this hammer guard. And you can cane jump off these. It can be a bit scary, so don't be too risky while learning. And once we're past there, the hard part is mostly over. Coming up here, there are lasers. As long as you full send past the lasers, you won't hit them. Again, remember, you can jump off these moving platforms, and it'll give you much more control. And don't forget about the bottle up top, because there's no way to get up if you already fall. The only way is to die and spawn back at the last checkpoint uh, before the pipe electric fan cycle. From there... We're going to hit these two bottles here, and you can use roll to bounce off the corner here and give yourself a bit of speed. Hit this bottle, climb the pipe, and from here we have cogwheel. Be very careful, it can be a bit difficult. If that is uh, too hard for you, you can always come this way, and if you end up just wanting to jump off of this, 
You can grab on, go up casually. It's really not too big of a deal. This is not 100%, so we don't need the key. So you only need to do that once, so it's even less of a time loss. From there, you just have this last vault over here. You can grab these and cut right back to the vault. And again, you don't need the key in all vaults. We have the major hub world skip. We've already beaten the boss. We can go from there. Combos 227. We'll do middle last again. And from there, we go to into the machine. Or I should say high class heist. When exiting into the machine, you got to be careful because this guard up by high class heist is on a cycle. So you want to make sure you're rolling on flat ground and moving right away. As long as you do both those things, you should be able to make it past him fairly easily. Now, entering high class heist, again, keep in mind, roll on flat services. It'll make making these laser cycles a lot easier. If you end up missing them, it's not a big deal. You just have to wait for him to pass. But there's only three bottles here at the beginning, the two at the beginning, one right there. From here, double jump over the first laser, trigger the second, and run right through the third. It won't hit you. From there, hit the statue, drop down, hit these three bottles, jump back up, and you can hit both these from here. After that, you can roll, hit this vault one time and only once. The reason being is you can jump on top, hit both of these, and then one hit that on the way back through. If you end up missing any of these bottles, don't worry about it. Don't come back for them because you can come back on the way towards these three bottles at the very end. So there's no reason to go out of your way when you're already running back that way. Anyway, from there, jump up on the wall, statue, and hit that bottle hiding up top. And be very careful of these BBJ guards. They can glitch through your vaults. After that... Run this way. We're going to jump across the lily pads. You can make a jump from this second one all the way over here without a ledge grab. It's a little scary. If it's not something you feel like doing, just jump across the lily pads. It really doesn't save that much time. From there, make sure you walk around that put pillar to get those bottles. After that, you can roll through these and jump around the right side of these spotlights. If you have to wait, don't worry about it. It's not too big of a deal. And get the left one first there, cut right, grab the right one, and hug the wall that way. After that, you got two more bottles here, and you don't need to worry about the key because we've already beaten the boss and unlocked World 2. So you can just drop down from there, go backwards through the level, and grab the last three bottles by the vaults. After grabbing the bottles, cut left, and grab the vaults. Middle last, of course. And from here, you can either, again, pause view map or just view map. Make sure you have that autosave logo or just take a peek at the bottom right of your screen. Make sure that vault's collected. And then you can just menu down to World 2. So when we get into World 2, we're immediately going to run to the left here. Unlike any percent, we don't jump to the right. We're going to go on the, around the left side here. So we jump on this rock and just jump around, hit this vault, and then immediately go for this bottle right here. As long as you charge this guard straight away, he won't bother you at all. Now, coming up here, you have two options. If you want to go the most beginner-friendly route, I recommend going this way. All you got to do is jump across all the platforms, grab the bottles, and then come across these hooks right here and continue on through the level. If you want to do the super jump strat, which is a little bit harder but saves a bit more time, you can go this way first, and you can grab these bottles off the right-hand side, and then we got to do the CSS just before we get to that super jump. Now, you can kind of see on the far side that far right point. It's about right here, but all the way through the platform. Uh, you want to aim at that when trying to skip this cutscene, because basically what we want to do is charm abuse this. We're going to run and fall off right as the cutscene triggers, and that will uh, skip the dialogue. If you miss it, it's not too big of a deal. It's only about a 10, 12 second cutscene. But aim at that point, run directly off, and then press X to immediately come back up. Now, if you are going for the super jump route, you want to grab this bottle, drop down, and we start the super jump from here. If you've already grabbed the bottles, just continue through the train cars and go through the level as you would normally. But if you're doing the super jump, and I'm going to show off the just charm abuse if you don't lose a charm in world one you can just die with a charm and it's a bit faster but if you want to do this with only one charm say you lose a charm in world one 
you can get stuck on the back end of that pole right there. So if you want to mess with that, feel free. But for the super jump strat, you want to jump down, start super jumping, and basically you just want to grab all of these bottles right here, fall in the water, and launch back. Again, that does cost you a charm. There is a stuck spot where you can avoid that uh, charm loss. Moving on, though. Grab these two balls off the right side, and again, you should be at 21 bottles at this point. You jump up here, and careful this card-throwing guard. He can hit you if you're not careful. There's a sneaky bottle down below here, and you want to really be careful with this jump. It's very easy to get stuck on the car and end up dying. There's three bottles off the right-hand side here. Continue up this way, and be careful on the presses. Sometimes it's just really not worth the risk of rushing those presses. There's a vault on the right-hand side there. Keep going. And I like to grab this bottle off the left on the way here because it makes uh, beating that press on the way back a lot easier. Also, if you roll here, you can get a bit of speed, and it's nice. After that, there's a, a bottle coming up here on the right-hand side just off of this pole. If you stay on the right side, hug the wall, and jump out, the guard won't even notice you until you jump over the fence. And this is the last vault we have to get, but we are going to come back through this level because you'll notice we're missing three bottles. So we do door clip, clip through the wall, and come back through the level. Uh, door clip is a bit of an advanced strat. Basically, you just want to hold up on your D-pad and angle your camera on the second bolt on the right-hand side. I'll show you real quick that bolts right on the right hand side of my screen you jump hold up on the d-pad and right as you land press x again if you haven't used that strat before if you don't feel comfortable doing door clip feel free to just grab the key and continue through that way but on the way back through the level since the vault is about halfway through we're going to go back this way and we have a few more bottles to grab on the way back now since we were able to grab that bottle just up here this cycle should be a bit easier since i stopped to show you guys door clip i don't know if it'll work out it did so that's the cycle you will get in a run if you grab that bottle earlier you can jump over this fence grab this charm if you want there is an extra one you get in boneyard so don't worry about going out of your way if you already have one charm then from here just put in the vault combo and head into the hub world and again, the reason we come back through the level instead of doing the vault right away is this way we're able to skip the vault animation and it's just way faster than running through the level and then walking back, watching the vault, and running all the way back through the level. Once you enter World 2 Hub, you'll have the cutscene here at the beginning. All you gotta do to skip it is just load. And then once you load, make sure you use roll down this bridge. Once you kill this guard, you want to head forward to Boneyard Casino. Now, when we enter Boneyard, there are some guards in front of us uh, that we want to be careful of. They are on a bit of a cycle, but we don't need to go fast. It's more of a slower cycle. So I roll down this beginning part, hug the left side, jump across the slot machines, but I'm not using roll here, as you'll notice. The reason that is, is I got to make sure that guard that I just passed gets all the way past me before I jump down. If you jump down too soon, he'll turn around and spot you because he'll hear you. Running this way, there's two bottles right here. Hug the right wall, and you can grab this charm. Make sure you kill these guards before you get those bottles. Hug the wall here. Jump up, and you can double hit both those bottles. After that, there's one bottle here on top of the chandeliers. You can kind of roll off the top to get a bit of speed and land on that guard a little bit easier, which is nice. Then you can jump off these slot machines on the wall. There's a couple bottles hiding on top in the, the bushes up here. Then you can loop back for the ones on the ground. From here, there's only one more bottle in that little section. And be sure to be careful about this guard. If you uh, jump from the middle, like say the guard is standing right here and he's shining his light around if you try and jump at him from the middle even though you're on the side of his light he can sometimes just 
quick scope you and hit you really fast so it's something to be careful of if you have the option I'd recommend jumping around the outside and hitting them from the side after that you head up this way there's a couple bottles here in this little hallway be careful of the card throwing guard and you can roll down here grab these bottles and again roll is kind of hard to use in this level because there's a lot of poker chips random bottles things around to block your way but whenever you have a flat ground open area to roll be sure you're using roll also these roulette wheels can be a bit finicky it's rare but you can clip through the ground and end up dying even without fast with this guard up here he's pretty easy to get past you don't have to worry about a cycle too much as long as you send it right away he won't see you Then these roulette wheels, sometimes you have to judge which side to jump on. Pay attention to where the lasers are. Sometimes going counterclockwise is faster, sometimes going clockwise is faster. It really just depends on your cycle. Then you don't forget there's one bottle up top here. So if you got if you got 39 and you're at the end of the level, don't forget about the bottle up here. Then you can make this jump down here, and the combination is three three eights. And then you exit level from there. So after leaving Boneyard Casino, you'll now have the fast ability since it's the seventh vault in the game. If you press L2 twice from roll, you'll be able to click on fast. Now you have an option here. You can either go for uh, catapult without killing the guard. The cycle is a bit tight. It's not too terribly difficult. But if you're trying to be safe, I'd recommend just killing the guard if you're just learning the category for the first time. So when you exit, two to the left, uh, pressing L2, you can kill the guard, and then you can turn around, and I'd recommend turning off fast for this. Now, very, very quick introduction on this trick. Uh, I do this very differently than most, so there's definitely better resources out there for learning, but the way I do it is I press down and up on the D-pad, angling slice ears, uh, compared to the little leaf thing in the background, this thing right here, and then I jump hold uh, up left and swing my cane in the corner and doing so launches me up in the air from there we're gonna jump across here get on top and straight to the top is just below we have to do a little bit of out of bounds movement here but we can just fall right into the level now straight to the top is one of the cooler levels in the game in terms of movement but it is fairly difficult so what we're gonna do here is we're immediately gonna go to the left grab that bottle and again, make sure you practice using fast. Using fast will be such an important part of this run from straight to the top onward through the rest of the run. And again, this is why in the intro I recommend highly to learn claw grip. Because the way I hold my controller, I'm always holding down triangle with claw grip. And it'll make uh, your movement and just everything about how you control Sly so much easier. From here... You want to grab this bottle, drop down, be careful of this guard because he can break that box and you want to use that as a proxy shortly. So you want to cut to the right, make sure he doesn't break the box, hit these bottles right here, turn around, angle yourself this way, and the only thing you need to do for box proxy is press X and tap forward. And that'll launch you in the air, but you want to pull to the right. You want to grab that bottle, kill this guard, this vault right here, jump up this wall, and this bottle can be very tricky. I'd recommend having a file to practice on for this route and just sit here and keep practicing this bottle because it can be difficult. The, the big pointer I can give is this little metal pole right here. You want to aim on the right side of it and just extend your analog stick in that direction and don't move it. You want to exaggerate that angle uh, pretty hard. So you want to stay on the top side here, run, exaggerate the angle, swing, and hit the bottle. Again, that bottle is very difficult, and I recommend that you sit there and practice it for a little bit. After that, you can kill that guard. You want to jump up this wall here off the antenna. If you are missing a charm, there is a charm up here you can grab, which is nice and handy. Grab that vault, drop down, and then we double jump onto the bottom level of this tower. We get those two bottles, cut back, grab this one. Careful of this guard, he can hit you. We got these two right here, and then you want to hug the wall and follow all the way this way and get these bottles on the cars. 
Now, one thing I do want to mention about the cars, uh, when you jump and stand on them, these cars will not fall until you jump off. So if you miss the bottle, stay on the car until uh, you're able to hit it. If you end up dropping a bottle, save your game, load, and go back up for it because you are soft locked. There's no way that bottle will come back unless you load for the bottle to respawn. After that, we want to go left here, grab these two bottles down here. This jump can be a bit tricky. Again, I recommend uh, you give this a little bit of practice before doing runs. You can double jump up, ledge grab there. Then you want to follow this way towards the dog, and this hook will have a bunch of bottles. While those are falling, grab this vault in the corner. And then we're basically just going to go this way, grab the last couple bottles there, do box proxy again, and launch ourselves up top. Grab the bottle at the end of the crane first. Then you want to double jump, avoid that guard's uh, cards. Grab the bottle off the car, the couch, and from there, you can just do the vaults. And again, this is an exit level vault. After collecting the vault in straight to the top, we're going to click exit level. Now again, remember we have fast, so we want to be holding down triangle as much as we possibly can. From there, we want to drop down, go across these hooks, and hug the right wall. Jumping across this railing means that guard won't be able to see you. This is also the first in instance in the run where we run across dialogue that we are able to skip. Now, dialogue means we are unable to use our Master Thief abilities. So at any cost, we want to be able to avoid those. Now, we avoid this one by hugging the right wall. It'll avoid some, uh, Bentley dialogue. We grab these bottles, jump up, cut left, grab these bottles, kill this guard. Now, we have two options here. We can either go up this pole and watch the cutscene, which is about 30 seconds, or we can do date skip. Date skip is an advanced strat that can be a bit difficult, but I'll do my best to kind of explain it here. So what we want to do is we want to get against the wall here, hold up on the deep end, make sure we're stuck all the way in there. Now we're watching the antenna cycle here. You see that window in the background right there? My visual cue for when to jump is as soon as that antenna is passing by the green part of the window to the left. So when it starts to pass the window, I want to jump, press up in the air, and up on the ground again. It's a bit confusing and takes a bit of practice, but once you get it down, the timing makes sense. So again, we want to wait till it's about to pass the window, just like that. When we get up here, we're going to do this jump across from this out of bounds building, and this can be a bit difficult as well. My setup for this is I go on the very far right line that you can see I'm jumping on right here, and I like to aim up on the D-pad and just hold up and run. Now you want to do an extended double jump off of that and it will let you land back in bounds. So you want to wait till the last second, do an extended double jump and from there, you'll be back in bounds. We got three bottles there, cut back, vault in the back, and again, really get used to using fast. It will make your life so much easier. You can do uh, a hoagie hop and what that is, is holding X off a jump, it gives you more heights and more control and from that you can land up top on that spire continuing through the level we're gonna get some coins here along the way coin count is important in this category and we're gonna grab this vault all the way in the back cut to the right bottle right there jump off that antenna if uh, Carmelita ends up breaking this antenna like she can I, mean, I guess you missed it there, but that's alright. You can come up this way off the mattress and cut this way. There is two bottles hiding in the back there, and then you go across this clothesline. Once you're over here, don't forget about that last bottle up top. You should be at 21 bottles at this point. Dropping down, there's two bottles on this platform outside, one on top of the TV and two in the corner. You should be at 26, and then there's two more vaults in this last room. You can jump across this gap, kill this guard, get the two bottles. Be careful here, because if you hit this vault at the right angle, sometimes a bottle can fall off the edge, and at that point you got to save, load, and go back through the whole level. So be careful about where you're hitting the vaults. From here, you can jump here, trigger the guard, and hit this last vault. This is also an exit level vault, and the combination is 5 3 2.
up next we have back alley high so we're gonna climb up this rope we're gonna double jump to the second spire and then we can do the first one and double jump over to the last one which saves a couple frames there so as soon as we get into back alley heist, there's going to be a dog up here. And you got to be kind of careful with the dog. He can get you pretty easily. As long as you time it well, you can just swing your cane and kill him there. After that, you want to hold X when you jump off the the bouncy rooftop things. The, the little tarps that you bounce off of. After that, you want to get that vault. Ledge grab, land here, double jump, and hold forward. Doing so will give you the bounce from the lower area. And you can immediately jump up here. Three bottles on the left land on top of this sign right here, and you can double jump over, kill this guard, and there's one bottle in the air. It's nice to immediately press circle when falling down, and you can latch onto this rope, kill this guard, and you got two bottles up there. From there, drop down, break the alarm, and you can go up this way, and basically just continue like you would casually. It is nice to swing your cane when you're landing on the little rooftop tarps, because it'll cancel your momentum and let you fall a little bit sooner. Instead of going the rest of the way casually like we normally would, we want to drop down to the very bottom here, land on this box, on the tires, and up top here. And when we're up here, you want to double jump, hold forward, and swing your cane. Doing so will let you land up top here. After that, you want to hit these bottles. And you can get multiple bottles at the same time, depending on your cycle if you're fast enough. The fastest cycle is you get uh, two bottles at a time and you only have to swing three times. After that, you jump up here and super jump off these air conditioners. If you do not super jump, your speed will be randomized and throw you in random directions. Super jumping gives you control over your jump. So what you want to do is super jump off the first one and you can hit all three of those bottles. Once you drop down, just have this one bottle here, kill the guard, vault right there, and then you got a couple bottles in the corners on every floor. After that, you should be at 29. There is one bottle here all the way at the end, so if you're at 29, don't forget about that last bottle. And again, we don't need to worry about the key, because we've got the hub world skip coming up shortly. From there, we're ready to grab the vault. And again, this is an exit level vault. After clicking exit vault in back alley heist, you're going to end up here. So you want to cut left, and there's a little bit of out of bounds movement here, run into this corner. Now, real quick, for mugshot catapults, my visual cue for when to jump is this dark line right here. I'll zoom in on it. So I jump by there. If you land on the darker side of that pink, you're going to slide off. So again, I stand in the corner, super jump, make sure not to cross that line. Continue that super jump, get into the corner, and launch back. And when you launch back, it's nice to use fast, so that way you're able to uh, get into the cutscene faster. Once you enter Mugshot, it can be a bit scary if you use fast, so be careful with using fast. Fast will make this boss fight go by a lot faster, but it takes some practice to get used to because Mugshot cycles can be so random and scary. So from here, I like to hit the middle, go right, and hit all of these. On the last set of mirrors, we uh, we do hit the first one, last one, and middle mirror. The reason we do this is because we can hit Mugshot after hitting the middle mirror, and it'll skip a little five second cutscene that plays. From there, we come up to the second cycle. I like to cut left, hit these two mirrors, pull Mugshot over here a little bit. And from there, he should get stuck behind the crystals, and we can just go this way. His cycles can be random, though, so be very careful based on your movement. The key note is, if you hear him cock his guns, double jump. Or make, at least make sure a crystal's in the way. Up here, we're going to do uh, chandelier. Now, chandelier is a little scary. Basically, you want to hit this mirror in front of me, and after that, when Mugshot shoots, hit the mirror, Double jump, uh, hold upright on your analog, double jump to the right, and then when you ledge grab, press X to jump up and land on top of the invisible collision by the mirrors, and then you're going to hold right and just hit all of the mirrors from there. So we double jump, ledge grab, hit all of the mirrors, and after that, just load, and from there, once we're finished loading, we can menu back to the uh, hideout and go into world three. 
be careful when you enter Dread Swamp Path because there is a Mosquito Guard here. Now, the reason to be careful is this Mosquito Guard will initiate a cutscene if you end up killing the guard. So when you run past, be sure not to swing your cane. Jumping across this tree branch here, you can immediately double jump, land on top of the drum, and land on top of this tiki. Now, if you have a charm here, you can just jump, land in the water, grab the bottle, and continue through the level that way. If you don't have a charm, just drop down, grab the bottle, and jump right back up. Continuing through the level, there's going to be a couple bottles off the path here, so keep your eyes open. Small thing to note with these vines, you can save a bit of time with movement just by double jumping and landing in the middle of the vine. So keep that in mind when you're running. Up here, there's going to be a couple more mosquito guards. Uh, if this is your first time messing with this category and you're just learning, I'd recommend killing these guards. Because the mosquitoes hitboxes can be a bit finicky and weird and it's very easy to get bit by the guards. So jumping over here, we're going to kill these guards. And we can grab this bottle up top and drop back down this way. Now we're going to jump across this ledge here. It'll save a bit of time compared to going down the vine this way. My visual cue is this bush and this bush. Basically I want to stand right in the middle. Stand on the very edge of the geometry, you'll see there's a bit of a point there. And from there, we just want to double jump over, ledge grab, jump, and land. Now, these swamp monsters can be a bit finicky as well. My recommendation, stand in place and just swing your cane. So as soon as I trigger, if I just stand here and swing my cane, I will not die. We're going to backtrack a little bit, grab these two bottles, cut back up, and go up these tree roots. Now, up here, there's going to be two more swamp monsters. I like to go right first. Again, same method, stand in place, swing your cane. And they do drop a lot of coins. So if your coin count is low, feel free to grab some coins from the guards. After that, we're going to drop down, grab this one bottle at the bottom, land on this rock. We can double jump up and land here. When you get up here, be a bit careful because there is a cutscene that will trigger if you land over here. So when we grab this bottle on the far side, be sure to hug the wall and be careful not to initiate that cutscene. From there, we're going to jump to this tree and across to the candles. Now, just like any percent, we're going to get the candles, do the candle cycle, except we're going to cut left a bit later than normal. We're going to get this one, wrap around, grab that bottle. We can kill this guard and make that candle. If the, those guards are a bit closer, you can wrap around the right side, cut this way, and break it there. So if you feel safer uh, doing it that way, feel free to do that. Now you'll notice we only have 19 bottles. That The reason that is, is there's one bottle over here. We actually leave this bottle and this vault for after Ruby. So don't worry if your one short is perfectly planned. After that, we grab the key. Unlike World 1 and 2, we don't have major hub world skips for World 3. So we actually have to collect all seven keys. And from there, we just walk to the end of the level, open the door, and continue into the hub world. After exiting Dread Swamp Path, you immediately want to pause your game and load to get to the center of the hub world. You can use fast in the menu transition to go a bit faster. From here, dialogue will be playing, so you cannot use your fast ability. There's no way to skip that, so don't worry at all. We're going to cut right and go into Lair of the Beast. Now, there is going to be a cutscene a few steps forward into this level, so immediately be ready to pause your game, options, and load your file. After the load, on the left hand side there's going to be three bottles sitting in the corner. Now we're going to jump up on this tree root right above us. Instead of going around casually on the right hand side, we can actually jump off this tree here. Now my visual cue is this little smudge kind of wraps down in the middle. There's a little piece there in the middle of the tree. I just aim for that smudge, jump up this way. Continuing up this way. We can land here, continue down the vine. I like to latch on to this uh, bone here, immediately jump over, and there's a ton of bottles sitting in the corner. Be sure to double check and make sure you get all these because there's a lot of bottles here, and sometimes they're easy to miss. Now there's going to be a couple bottles coming down this vine here. You can use fast, but remember it is a bit scary to grab these bottles. If you end up swinging and missing like that, you can just go back up and come back down and swing again. Now, before we continue to the next part, 
we need to jump to the left of this tree instead of walking around to the right. We can jump over this tree here. It is a bit easier with fast because you have a bit of momentum. So when we drop down, we're going to double jump, grab onto this tree, and come up this way. We can land on this tree root, come back up this way, and be one bottle in the middle there. When we get to these hooks, make sure you use fast. Fast will give you more momentum and more control over Sly as you continue through this section. It'll look something like this. You'll notice how I'm skipping a bunch of the hooks just because I'm preserving my momentum using fast. Now here, be very careful. We don't want to immediately jump to the next part where that bottle is because there's a Bentley dialogue that will trigger. So what we want to do instead is hug the right side of this uh, current platform, double jump, grab this hook. From here, double jump back, swing, and grab the uh, bottle there. Be very careful. It's a bit finicky, and you want to avoid that cutscene. If you end up triggering the dialogue, it only loses a couple seconds. Don't worry if you trigger it. Continue through the level like normal. Continuing through, you can ignore these spiders and move this way. You can also avoid these ones. Now, these, uh, these mosquitoes here can be a bit scary. If you get bit, don't worry about it. You should have a charm by this point because you pick one up in Lair of the Beast. Or uh, Dread Swamp Path, I should say. There's going to be one bottle here uh, near the top. Make sure you grab that and don't overlook it. Landing up here, there's three bottles on the right side. So you want to drop down, grab these bottles, double jump, and ledge grab up there. If you fall, that's totally okay. You can drop down, uh, climb back up the tree roots like you did before. Um... Grabbing the edge looks something like this. It's really not too hard. You basically just want to aim for the big piece of hanging grass from the edge that I'm standing on right here and do an extended double jump towards that point. There's going to be a couple bottles here on these upcoming vines. You can use fast if you prefer. Be very careful using fast on vines. It can be easy to just slide right off. Now here, you can either do a super jump and grab these bottles or just go and grab them and come back. If you super jump, Grab the bottles, drop in the water, you'll grab back on the hook, and jump over here. Now, be very careful. You don't want to latch on to that tree root over there. Doing so will trigger the serpent uh, that'll swim through, and it'll be a huge auto-scroller. To avoid the snake, we want to jump over here and stand at the furthest point to the right, and just double jump and press circle, and you'll latch onto this tree root here. Doing so will completely avoid that section, and you can go through at whatever pace you like. There's going to be a couple bottles up here to the side, and you'll grab the rest of the bottles this way. So just continue through the level casually, and there's, your last bottle will be right down here at the bottom of the spiral. And you don't have to ride down the spiral. You can just press X and jump down. Camera angle here is totally uh, runner preference. So whatever feels most comfortable for you, go that route. Now, when we get to the end of the level, we want to grab this key. I'd recommend turning off fast here, land, and then swing and pause. Using fast can be a bit scary there. Something worth mentioning, especially as we're getting into World 3, is be careful on your key pauses, because this is the first world we have to get all the keys in. With the key pauses, be sure you see the autosave logo before you load the game. If you pause a bit early, like in any percent, you can usually exit level and say, oh yeah, it'll be okay. I don't have to worry about it because I'll get it on the fade out. In all vaults, those bottles do not save until you collect uh, the key and see that autosave logo. So what to do if you don't see the autosave logo when you pause? Just exit level because exiting level will save your bottles and enter back the level uh, right away. So keep that in mind, especially in World 3. Once we load back into the level, because remember we still need the vault, we're going to continue up this way and we're going to use the any percent route and go out of bounds. So from here, we want to cane jump, land out of bounds, turn left, double jump, ledge grab, land up here. From here, you have two options. You can either do snake jump. Uh, snake jump, you want to land here, cut left, and just do an extended double jump and land onto that tree root over there. If you would not like to use snake jump, because it is a bit difficult and only saves a second or two, you can come to the corner here, double jump up, and uh, you can actually slope jump this. This is more of a slope jump than a double jump. So you want to angle yourself against the left wall here, double jump, and hold your analog stick upwards, and you should be able to land up here. Once you get up here, it's just a simple single jump down, and you're right by the vault. And the combination is 4-4-4. Four, four, four. 
After collecting the vault here in Lair of the Beast, you're going to click Exit Level. Now, we're going to go to Piranha Lake, which is a mini game up next. Now, just so you're aware, there is a level skip for this level in which we're able to clip through the wall and skip the entire mini game. This trick is arguably the hardest trick in the entire game, and if it's difficult for you, I definitely recommend just doing the uh, level casually as any other player would. Now, for fish skip, I'll show you my setup. My setup is I like to bonk off the right hand side of this gate up here, cut up here, and when we're up in the corner, angle the skiff a little bit to the right into this corner, and on the left hand side of your screen, line your camera up with that leftmost post of the gate. From there, you're going to just flick to the right until you barely see um, the light come out of the hill and continue that motion until you're able to clip through the wall. And I'll show you what it looks like uh, when it works. It looks like this. And after you get through the gate, you're going to go right up here, grab the key, press view map, and go down to the hub world. When you get into the hub world, you have two options. You can either go up to grave casually where you bounce off that drum over there, climb that rope, and go across the blue stealth auras that way. Or if you want to try something a bit different and a couple seconds faster, you can come up here and do something we call hula jump. Basically all we're doing is doing an extended double jump and ledge grabbing up top on that ledge. I aim just to the left of the leftmost spike on the fence and I ledge grab right about there. A running start does help as well with this trick so don't be afraid to step back and get a good running start. When you get up top, kill the guard and run into grave undertaking. Now as soon as you get into this level, there's going to be a big jumble of vines. You can either press square and spam square to break the vines. It takes three hits to break them that way. Or if you spam up on your up input, you can actually hit the vines and break them in either one or two swings. It's a bit faster. Um, you can do this either with up on the D-pad or up on the analog. Up on the D-pad is far easier in my experience, but it does work with analog as well. And it looks like this. So you'll notice I hit that in two instead of three. And you can also do it in one if you get lucky. Coming forward here, there's going to be one bottle off to the right here. Make sure you get this. It's kind of sneaky and easy to miss. When you drop down, there is going to be some dialogue that plays. There's nothing you can do about the dialogue. There's no way to skip it. So just listen and continue. When you get over here, there is a ghost totem and that's going to spawn ghosts. Killing the ghost is okay, but do not kill the totem. Reason being is there's a Bentley dialogue there, and again, Bentley dialogue means we cannot use our Master Thief abilities, so we cannot use fast. So I, I like to do single swings here to make sure we don't break that totem. If you end up breaking the totem, don't worry about it. It's only a couple second cutscene. Just continue through the level like you normally would. Coming up here, there's going to be a vault just to the right of that door. Grab that, one in the middle, and one on the right side by the swamp monster. I like to ignore the swamp monster and jump around him. Now, when we get here, there's going to be a rock off to the left here. We're going to do some out-of-bounds movement on that rock and go out-of-bounds. But first, there's one bottle in here. And you can do this with fast, but it can be a bit scary. So take your time, practice, and it'll get easier over time. Grab the bottle, come backwards, jump on the rock... If you fall in, you have water safety, so you can immediately just jump right back out, climb the rock, jump up out of bounds, and then cut down the middle of the eyes here where there are three bottles. When you get on top of the left eye, face out of bounds, double jump, and ledge grab. The double jump can be a bit tricky, but once you get the timing down, it's not too bad. Then continue up to the left side, out of bounds. There's going to be a flat section you can stand on here. Now you can see this pole that's stacked vertically on top of this roof. If you look at that, and on the bottom uh, full squares, these two right here, if you go two to the left, which is this one right here, just double jump towards the middle of that square and press circle, and you'll end up grabbing on to this rope. Continue on to the chandelier in here. Grab these two bottles. Double jump over to this wall and land here. And again, to find which wall to jump on, if you're confused, just look for the vault that's sitting right here. There's no vault on the other side over there. Break the vault. Come around this way. And if you have a couple extra charms, it's good to lose a charm here. 
So what I like to do is I like to get that last bottle, drop down, and lose that charm. So that way, with my iframes, when I come down here, I can lose my second charm in here. After that, getting the bottles, we want to die in that fire. What that will do is it'll spawn us back up top here by the swamp monster, which is why we originally did that out of bounds movement. Again, with the swamp monster, stand in place and just swing your cane, and you should kill him no problem. There's going to be one bottle on your right hand side here, and then jumping across here, be careful of the fire. It can be kind of easy to die, so take your time and try not to rush the cycles. Now, here, this ghost totem just like all ghost totems spawns a set number of ghosts you can only have so many ghosts on uh in the level at a time so what i like to do is i like to bait them around and follow me around along the right hand side and that way they won't spawn anymore or bother me so it looks like this so we get a couple to spawn in i grab the bottles you see all these guys are behind me this totem won't spawn any more ghosts in so i don't have to worry about the ghosts anymore Grab those two bottles, jump on the vine. There's one sneaky one on the left here, and then be careful of these ghosts right here. If you die there, you lose about 30 seconds because you have to spawn all the way back by the swamp monster. Continuing forward, there's two bottles there. These ghosts here, again, if you die, don't worry about it. You've got the charm that's right back there, so you don't have to worry about dying and losing a life. From here, you should need only six more or uh, four more bottles and they're in those vaults back there. So we're gonna do the out of bounds, like in any percent, to come back this way for the vault. So from here, just grab the key and load the game. After loading the game, you're gonna hit the vines, go over here, land on this tree branch. Ledge grab right here, turn your camera, and jump up. And you can see on the right hand side of my screen, there's a branch. You just wanna double jump to the right, and grab that branch now it can be a bit tricky so I'd recommend uh, practicing this trick because it can take some time to learn but when you ledge grab it just press X double jump forward land here double jump up to the right and go this way I like to stay to the right of this branch cut left and go forward this way and I just stay on the right hand side of these branches you can continue this way if you want, but if you're scared, you can drop down out of bounds anywhere back here. Continue running this way, and you can just cut over and land right next to the vaults. After collecting the bottles, you can go grab this vault, and this is an exit level vault. So you're going to do one, two, eight, and then you're going to click exit level. When you exit a grave undertaking, you want to immediately turn around and go to this wall just to the right of this tree. And we're going to do a slope jump here to uh, use some out-of-bounds movement to get to down home cooking. So what we want to do to slope jump is, again, jump, land, hold up on your analog, and double jump. And again, don't let go of your analog while moving at all. If, if you let go of up on your analog while doing your double jump, your slope jump will fail. Now, when we get into chickens, you have an option here. You can use fast, but it will be a lot scarier. Fast will save you a substantial amount of time here, but once you get used to it, it's not too terribly bad. The biggest thing about chickens to keep in mind is uh, the roosters won't spawn until you get to eight chickens. In addition to that, keep in mind your cane can wrap around the feed bags. So you don't wanna just continuously swing your cane Doing so will cause you to wrap around and end up hitting the roosters, and it can be a bit frustrating. If you lose your charms here, don't worry about it. If you really want to keep them, you can always load at the end of the level and get those back. Otherwise, you just spend the rest of the level basically running around, swinging, hitting as many chickens as you can. Try and keep them grouped up as much as possible. And after you get 50... Don't forget you can skip this key. I recommend taking off fast, jump, swing your cane, and pause. And from there you can exit level and head to Ghastly Voyage. After exiting the level, you want to go this way. Drop down to the right hand side of Ghastly Voyage. And it is worth noting you can actually skip the animation of uh, the ride in on the skiff here. All you got to do is double jump from the right hand side, swing your cane, and you'll drop down right next to the skiff. 
then you can use fast and run into the level. It saves about a second, second and a half. Now, when you get into the level, dialogue will play, but it doesn't matter because you actually cannot use your Master Thief abilities at all in this level. For this first ghost tower, hug the left hand side and shoot from there. On the second one, sit on the right hand side and shoot uh, from here. After that one, there's a fire turtle up on the left hand side. If you sit in the front left of the boat, the fire turtle actually cannot hit you at all. After killing the fire turtle, you want to sit back just a little bit so that way uh, you can just move forward on the boat and shoot the ghost towers before all the ghosts spawn in. It's very handy to be able to sit back a little bit because now you can see I can move up and I can stop them before the ghosts even spawn. From here, you want to hug the middle, slowly work your way forward, be careful with the throwing head guards, it's very easy to get hit by them. Then shoot on the left hand side, work your way forward, and be careful, especially on this last section of the first part here, ghosts can actually spawn underground and kill you from there, so it can be a bit scary. So watch out for ghosts and always be careful. Also on this section, you can kind of shoot before you get to the barriers and save a little bit of time. And inch your way forward, be very careful of the ghosts. And from here, you really don't need to worry too much about these fire turtles, you can kill them if you want. And my version of Fastly is a bit different than some, but it's the only Fastly I know, so I'll show it off here. Basically what I do is I kill the ghost on the right, come in, kill the tower, kill the middle tower, kill the ghost, then the left tower. And you listen for the sound on the left tower. Once you grab the key, we're going to head over to Descent into Danger. When exiting Ghastly Voyage, you have to be a bit careful because you are on a cycle immediately with these guards. So we want to jump counterclockwise and jump over their spotlights. There's going to be two you have to jump over. Just double jump and you'll be fine. Running into Descent, there is going to be a tangle of vines at the beginning and you can do your press up strat to hit that faster, remember. Now coming up here, we're going to have a trick called Bone Jump and it's definitely one of the most difficult cane jumps in the entire run. I will show a backup strat to it as well, but I want to briefly touch on it before we get there since we are on such a tight cycle. So the way I do bone jump is I get a running start, grab onto the bone, cane jump off the left hand side and hold upright on my analog and doing so will have me land just to the right of the vault up above. It's a bit tricky to explain so I'd recommend you just hop in the level, practice and feel it out and it'll get easier over time. So, you're going to also see three bottles here on the right hand side. We're going to leave that till our second pass through and I'll show you why. So, coming through, we're going to break these vines, single jump, land on this root, running start, grab on, cane jump up, and I like to jump up and around it this way so that way the guard won't attack me and I know I'll be safe. So then we're going to grab these bottles and continue up through the level this way. Now again, if bone jump is a struggle for you uh, when practicing it, I'd recommend you come all the way to the end here, turn your camera, and you can cane jump off there and land here. Just be careful about the guard cycle and it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Continuing through the level, we want to do a jump off this wall here. And the way I see where to jump is a jump off the smudge right there. So look for the smudge. Double jump at it, and you should be able to jump off and onto this pole over here. Jump off this wall, onto the snake statue. After that, you can grab these bottles over here. Be sure to get all the bottles while you're down here, because you won't be coming back this way. After that, we have scuba. And what scuba is, is basically we're going to jump across and past the death plane, because the devs didn't extend the death plane into the water down here. So if we just time our jump precisely, we won't have to... Uh, get the key casually which would take a lot longer so my setup here is I like to stand on the back left of this lip hanging out from the statues and angle my analog up left and do a single jump the reason we do a single jump is we want to use our second jump right before we touch the water to get as much distance as we can so what it looks like is this so I jump up left 
and you'll notice how late that second jump was. That's how I'm able to get past the death plane. From here, we're going to walk to the end. We're going to double jump up, grab on, and land by the key. It is worth noting that you can fall off and get stuck in an infinite drowning loop here, and it's a soft lock. If this happens to you, load your game and come back through the first phase of descent again. Now, after you get here, we're going to hit the key, load the game, and come back to the beginning of descent. Now, this cycle is harder to make than the first one. So again, if you're having trouble with bone jump, I recommend doing the backup strat I previously showed. From here, we want to break the vines, grab all three of these bottles, jump across this route, do bone jump, but when we get up here, immediately cut left. You can sometimes block it, sometimes he hits you. Uh, if you're fast enough, you're able to make that cycle. If you get caught, don't worry about it, just kill the guard. Jump off the wall up here and be careful of this guard up top. Wait till he turns and you'll have just enough time to come up and hit him. From here, break these bottles here, go backwards through the level, kill this guard, and get these two bottles here. After that, you want to drop down by this bottle down here by this guard, get the bottle, turn, kill the guard. Now, with this vault, it's very easy to knock the bottles in the water. I wouldn't recommend hitting the vault from this side because since the water's so close, it's easy for the bottles to fall in. If you have a bottle fall in, the only thing you can do is save the game, load, and come back for that vault on a different pass-through. I like to hit it from this side because there's more ground behind it, so it's easier for the bottles to find a place to sit. After getting those bottles, we're going to continue up this way, break the one candle, jump across to the logs, we got two bottles here, kill the fire turtle, and cut back this way. Now, see this torch hanging off this pole. From here, we want to double jump up and ledge grab this pole. If you fall in, no big deal because you have water safety. From here, we want to jump up, across, and cut to the far side. Then we're going to slowly work our way ba back this way, go to the far top right side. Now, we're going to do a bit of out-of-bounds movement here as well. This part's really easy to land on. You have a lot of space. But the next spot, right here, you'll notice that it's very small. Besides this flat section, none of the rest of it is uh, possible to stand on. So be careful on this jump here. After that, you jump up here, and we're going to continue up this rope. Now, this rope does trigger dialogue from Ruby. If you're just starting out, don't worry about it too much. Uh, the dialogue will only waste a couple seconds. So feel welcome to climb up the rope and continue that way. If you'd like to skip the dialogue and continue to be able to use your fast ability, we're going to jump off this pole here. Now you want to make sure you jump uh, a little bit further up than the far right side because the dialogue box is about like this where I'm outlining with my Binocucom. So we want to jump kind of around here. So what we do is we get a running start. We double jump, jump off the pole. If you fall in, again, don't worry because... We do have water safety. So we jump off and we arch around and get around the dialogue. And that's how you do that. From here, we jump across and we land on this platform. And you can see the lasers. We're going to cut right through it and we're going to do a super jump strat. Now, the reason I want to explain this is this cycle is a bit tight. So there's a lot that's about to happen here. So we're going to run, trigger this dialogue over by a route we're going to walk across. And after doing so, we're going to cut back and get three bottles on a super jump. Now, again, this only saves about a second or so. Don't worry about it if you're just learning. This is one of the most technical levels in the entire game. So we're going to super jump back, grab the bottles, fall in the water, and launch back. And it'll save about a second because we're able to use fast sooner. So what we're going to do here is cut through, run this way, trigger the dialogue, Super jump. Land in the water. Launch back. Now, when we do so, we want to lose uh, one charm if you have two. But we're going to do something called candle skip here as well. You'll notice around here there's a bunch of candles. So that spike-filled uh, log over there, that actually opens up after breaking all of the candles. We're able to skip this by using our iframes after dying and jump across and i'll show you what that looks like here so we want to jump across lose our charm and with our iframes we can jump across this way 
and just kill the guard. And then we don't have to deal with breaking the candles. And that saves a few seconds as well. Now, these spire points can be a bit scary. Try not to rush it too much. But also, if you have a charm at this point, I would recommend losing that as well. Because it will be much faster in Ruby for you to not have any charms. When you get to here, you should have 38 bottles. Break the right candle, ride down the vine. On the right-hand side, you'll see the vault and the final two bottles. And this is a view map vault. We're going to view map two chickens from here. So it's 571. So we put in the last combination. We press view map. And again, make sure you have that vault. Either auto save logo bottom left or watch the vault icon when you view map. From here, we view map to chickens. And we're done with descent. Once you load into chickens, click exit level from there. Basically, all we want to do is just run to the ruby boss fight. We already have all the keys. So once you get out, just turn around and run this way. You can trigger all seven of these locks, open them up, and then drop down on this pot lid down below. When you get into ruby, make sure you're moving right away because you are on a cycle. I full send the first three uh, teeth that are coming down here and then from this tooth I double jump across and land here now you don't have to do that it really doesn't save much time if any frames at best feel free to jump across the fourth tooth there but when you get on this one face this tree hanging off the side and I like to take a little hop on this tree as well it makes it a bit safer before continuing our out-of-bounds movement so what I do is I run towards it land and I do a little hop as well just to make sure we're completely landed on the tree from here hold upright and spam X cut to the right face this little hook looking piece of branch jump up land on top of it double jump upright and from here we want to slope jump so slope jump up this wall face this way and continue this way now the reason we're doing this out of bounds movement is because we want to skip the dialogue that Ruby uh, goes through on the first phase. So we want to basically just die to the water over here. The only issue with this is that this is all vaults. So because we're collecting the vaults, we do have water immunity. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to let Ruby's attack hit us, and then we're going to die in the water on this side. Now, if you have any charms left, remember, the only way to die is by Ruby's attack or by the teeth hitting you. So I recommend if you have a charm coming into this level that you lose it on the teeth early on since you do have water safety and the risk is low for dying in the out of bounds section. Once you're up here, you should not have any charms. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drop down and let Ruby's attack hit us into the water so we do die. Because remember, we can't die to the water. One small thing I do want to point out is if you do get out of bounds with a charm, I recommend you fall into the water anywhere in front of me where the second phase of the boss fight is just die in the water you'll immediately get launched back up top here drop down next to ruby and let her hit you into a wall it's worth noting that if she hits you back into the beginning section you actually can end up spawning all the way back at the beginning so be very careful but the most optimal strat would be this one right here we drop down and then she can hit us right there and you can actually land on the edge of that platform behind ruby as well so use that to your advantage to uh not waste time and not have to go back and get hit by ruby here this is just a ddr section just press the buttons as they come if you end up uh dying here you'll spawn in the second phase as well so you don't have to go through the first one uh something worth noting you can also spam your button inputs here as well but from there, I'm just going to skip ahead until we get to the final hit here on Ruby. Alright, so when you get here up by Ruby, let her do her first attack, and then you're going to jump down and stand there. 
I like to run directly at Ruby from the point I'm at now. I don't like to go on the sides. So basically what we're going to be doing here is skipping the final phase of the boss fight by double hitting Ruby. So we're going to land on the ground, stand next to Ruby, pause the game. So we're going to get to that point here. So again, we let her attack, jump down, land next to her, pause the game. From here, we want a menu down to exit level. So we're going to press X to exit level. Then hold forward on our analog stick and spam square to hit Ruby twice. Doing so, we'll skip the final phase of the boss fight. So again, we press exit level, we spam X, and you'll see that autosave logo. That'll tell us we skipped the boss fight. Now, we're not done with this split yet, because when we get back here, we're going to press 2 to the left on L1 and run all the way back to the first level we did in the world. So we're going to head back into Dread Swamp Path, and we're going to get that last bottle and last vault we forgot about before. That we purposely left for after Ruby, because it's faster and we don't have to watch the vault animation. So we get that last bottle, go into the vault, and the combination is 588. So when we do that, press select, view map, and we're going to menu into the hideout and continue into World 4. After jumping out of the van, we're going to continue up this way. Ignore the guard on the left for a moment, we'll deal with them in a second. So we want to grab these two bottles in this vault. All the way in the top right, there's going to be two bottles here. Cut to the middle, grab this bottle, and then you got two bottles on the right as well. Now it's up to you if you want to kill that guard or not, it just depends on where he's at. It's really no big deal either way, it doesn't really save or lose time. But after collecting these bottles, you should be at seven total. There's seven bottles in this beginning section. Continue up the bridge, kill this guard, and hug the right wall. If you hug the right wall, this guard can't mess with you at all. Coming up this way, there is a cutscene by this trigger. Or this uh, checkpoint, I should say. Be very careful not to trigger this cutscene. If you end up triggering the cutscene, you can only pause before the Banaki Com is open. If you wait until the cutscene actually starts, there's no way to skip it, and it's a very long cutscene. So what I've learned works best is to turn the camera and make sure you kind of nudge slide forward and swing the cane just ever so slightly until you end up hitting that bottle. That way you know you're hitting the bottle from the furthest possible point you can and you know you won't trigger that cutscene. Now we're going to cut back this way and go out of bounds. The reason we want to go out of bounds is to make sure we avoid that cutscene. So we have two options. One, we can either land on top of this sign, double jump up, ledge grab, and move out of bounds this way. But that sign can be a bit tricky to land on as you can see right there it's very easy to miss it so if you're having trouble with that sign jump off this rock here and ledge grab this way coming out of bounds be very careful of this first little snowy area if you end up going on there you can still trigger the cutscene down below so make sure you don't stand on that snow hug to the right and stay on the grass once you get over here you're perfectly okay just double jumping up this snow and you'll be all right when out of bounds, be very careful because sometimes your camera can change up here just like that. So be ready for a camera change. While moving out of bounds, basically what we're doing here is just avoiding this snowball throwing guard. And the reason we want to avoid it is sometimes the snowball throwing guards uh, hitboxes can be a bit finicky and it's easy to die. So if you have the option, run across up top here. If you end up falling a little early, it's not a big deal. Just don't die to the guard and continue up to the bridge casually there's gonna be a couple bottles on this bridge make sure you get them and then after going across this hook there's gonna be a light you want to double jump jump off the lights off this top out of bounds wall and continue through this way now if you do that all in one motion you shouldn't have an issue just full sending double jumping through the blue stealth auras with the icicles make sure you practice this in a practice file before in a run if you're scared of the icicles just take it slow until you feel comfortable full sending the cycles in one fluent movement. From there, continue up this way, avoid these snowballs, and you can either hit them, jump over them, or just run along the right side, whatever you're comfortable with. After that, you're gonna hit this firework, drop the gates, and jump off this bounce pad. When up top, if you hide behind this statue, this guard actually can't see you. So you can jump around, kill him, slope jump up, and hit these fireworks. After dropping the fireworks, or hitting the fireworks, one will drop that gate over there, one will drop this trap door. We don't want to go down the trap door because there are bottles up here. So we want to turn around, grab these bottles, 
hit the fireworks, and we can jump down this way. And it's a bit faster than going through the trap door, and you're able to get the three bottles up top. Make sure you don't forget those bottles. After that, you're going to continue across this way. This guard's going to lunge at you. Make sure you kill him. Grab this vault here, and we're going to continue to this corner for a super jump we're going to do to get into the hub world. We'll grab these bottles in just a moment. Now, it is worth noting that there's a cutscene here. So to avoid it, make sure you don't go onto the snowy part over here. You'll see a bit of stone here. Make sure you just stay on the stone section, and you should be just fine. So run into the corner, start your super jump, go along this way, and there's two trees here. Double jump in the middle, and you'll get stuck and be launched through the gate. After getting into the hub world, what you want to do is create a dummy save. Because remember, dummy saves are legal if we create them in a run. And this is just a file we're going to create on a different file by saving over it. And we're going to use it later to skip a cutscene with the final vault in Unseen Foe. So what we want to do is click Options, Save, and Save over this top file. Now we're going to leave that middle file and we'll deal with it later. But for now, we're going to go back into the level this way. Now... I'd recommend slowing down the video here because this section is on a cycle and it can be a bit fast pace. Take this from somebody who spent way too long doing this route wrong and it cost me a lot of runs, a lot of time, and a lot of headaches. So what I recommend you do is learn this forest route and it'll make life a lot easier. So coming from here, we're going to get this bottle on the left hand side first, turn to the right, and run towards the wall. Couple bottles along the way, get this one on the wall. There's going to be a couple guards up here. We want to wait for them to pass. Grab these two bottles on the wall. Turn left. Grab the bottles on the left. Turn to the right. Grab this one. Cut to the right of this tree up here. There's one bottle there, one bottle on the right-hand side, and one on this wall here. Now there's two more bottles up top you can see in the very top corner. We're going to grab those, but we don't want to trigger this checkpoint up here. So what we want to do is hit these, cut back, and jump out and die. The reason we want to do this is so we can spawn back all the way back there and get the vault faster. If you end up triggering the checkpoint, just walk back, be careful about the guards. But the fastest way is just to die and not trigger that checkpoint by the key. When we're back here, we want to be very careful because we won't have a charm and we need to jump across here. So what I like to do is stand on the back end of this hook and I like to run down the edge of this gate and then arch jump around to the guard. And I think the best time to do this is when the guard is turning around. So wait till he's about to turn. Just like that. Jump around. Ledge grab. Kill the guard. And from there, you can jump. Hit these fireworks. And this time, we are going to drop down below and open the vaults. So we're going to drop down below. Open the vaults. And then the combination is 5, 7, 8. So we do 5, 8, and seven and you'll see the autosave logo view map and you'll see we have that vault there and we can menu directly into the hub world when you load into the hub you are on a bit of a cycle so be careful with this guard if you just full send it up the ramp here you won't have any issue killing that guard also something to keep in mind is right there coming up like you would casually there is a cutscene here so make sure you don't cut too hard to the right when spawning in in the hub world now, when entering the level, there's going to be a guard here at the beginning of the level. And you want to jump over him. You don't want to kill him. Because if you end up killing him, he'll trigger some Bentley dialogue. And you don't want to listen to that because you are unable to use fast while the dialogue is playing. So just jump up to the right-hand side. Ignore this guard here. Keep going across this way. There's going to be a couple bottles down at the bottom of this hill. Immediately cut back up and stand here. We're going to do a hook jump to get these bottles way up top there. And to do so, I like to look at the ground here. You'll see there's like this point here. It's kind of pointing this way. That's my visual cue for where to run at. I stay to the right-hand side of that, run forward, double jump, and hook jump off that middle hook. And that's something you want to practice over time. Again, it's all about delaying until the last possible second, just like that. Another helpful tip I learned is don't try and ledge grab up here. If you try and ledge grab up here, it's a lot harder because you'll notice that these wooden planks are much higher up. When you're ledge grabbing, try and ledge grab these right here on the right-hand side. And again, delay that hook swing until the last second, then double jump to the right. When jumping up here, grab these two bottles, jump back over, hit this firework stand and come up this way. And then we're gonna just jump up this rope. And when we get up top, 
we're gonna drop down below here get these bottles now if you happen to have a charm here you can actually save a couple seconds by super jumping on top of this vault so what you should do is super jump down hit the vault once and then again because of that charm if we continue the super jump after getting these bottles we don't have to death abuse here we can just lose the charm jump back up top and immediately continue on to the next bottles so we do this and i like to jump swing and kind of continue like that just like that so if i had a charm here i'd actually be able to just fall in jump back up and continue to get those bottles if you don't have a charm take the death when you spawn back in just jump up the rope and from here you'll be right back where you were if you lost the charm again it's only a few seconds so don't worry either way break this continue across these light fixtures and grab these bottles here now something to keep in mind is this little wood piece holding up the lights if you stay to the right hand side it's much easier to stand on so what I like to do is just single jump this so I'll jump over grab that and immediately jump over to this wall when on this wall you can just ledge grab press X to jump back up just double jump up you can neutral jump it grab onto this wall neutral jump again and land up top then just jump forward you'll land down on this roof now to be safe I'd recommend you drop down and stand on this little ledge here and you can find this guard the big thing to keep in mind here is you don't want to die to that guard and you do not want to trigger this checkpoint so make sure landing on this lower ledge here that you watch where that guard is because you don't want to run anywhere towards this direction to kill that guard because if you trigger that checkpoint you'll mess up your spawns for your checkpoints so you want to grab these bottles run this way drop down go across these blue stealth auras grab both these bottles drop down and die after dying you're gonna load back in and you should spawn up top here assuming you didn't trigger that checkpoint ride down make sure you kill the guard continue this way kill the guard break this vault and then there's blue stealth auras on the outside here go across there's gonna be two bottles in the back here kill this guard ride the fireworks stand up and then run up this way after hitting this fireworks stand you'll get up to the final three bottles and you can actually do some out of bounds movement here it's a bit deceiving because you'll see it looks like you can run up this way but actually if you just hug this right side it'll be a lot easier and from here you can land on top of this be careful about these ninja guards go across these hooks across these blue stealth auras and we've already collected all the bottles from so from here it's basically just use fast and make sure we don't die land up top by this vault and then the combination is nine three two so we do nine two one two three and we're able to exit from there After exiting Flaming Temple, you want to immediately turn around, jump off this fence, and up top above Flaming Temple. After that, you want to run across this wall here, into this watchtower, hug to the left of that pole, and run along the wall here. After dropping down, you can actually jump off this and land on top of this pipe here. If you end up missing it, just climb up the pipe from the bottom. That's where we'll enter Duel by the Dragon. Now, when you enter duel, there's immediately going to be two bottles off the right-hand side. Make sure you grab those and don't forget them. Those ones are really annoying to come back for. Ignore this guard, climb up this firework stand, and ledge grab on the side here. Now, you have about a sly and a half model on this edge here where you won't trigger the Carmelita cutscene. Everything to the right of me is a cutscene, so make sure you stay on the edge here and you don't go too far to the right. After grabbing this hook, you're gonna slide down you can jump grab these bottles here continue down this way grab these bottles and you are on a cycle for this upcoming firework stand area so make sure you move kind of fast you're able to jump across there and avoid that last firework spire grab that vault jump up these icicles and grab these three bottles up top now while that gates falling you can super jump down here grab those bottles come up here and lose your charm continue through the level kill this guard there's gonna be three bottles on your left hand side after grabbing those jump across climb up this pole and break these fireworks and that one there then there's gonna be three bottles on your right it's much faster to go on the left hand side and get those bottles while the gate is falling 
Now, after you go across this gate, there's going to be a couple bottles here on the left-hand side. Grab the vault first, two bottles here, and there's a sneaky one in this corner, so be careful. There's two bottles here, and you can go across the spire points, or uh, I should say blue stealth auras. And then you can actually jump around, latch onto this, and then you're just kind of waiting for Carmelita to shoot from there. When you land over here, there's going to be a vault, couple bottles in the water. Make sure you don't miss any of them. And this last vault in a little gazebo in the corner. Now, that vault in the gazebo in the corner, be very careful because it's very easy to have one of those bottles kind of jump further back. So watch your bottle count and make sure you don't miss them. After getting those bottles, continue on top this way. Through the rest of the level casually. And you can cut to the right. There's two bottles on top there. I like to wait to grab them to hit these first so that way you can grab the bottles while the icicles are falling. And after that, you're really just waiting for Carmelita to hopefully not shoot your icicles out from under you. Remember, Slide does not ground on these icicles no matter what. So if you end up uh, dying on that section, it's very easy to get launched all the way back and lose a ton of time. So be careful on those icicles. We go into the vault, and the combination is 2-3-1. So from there, we can click exit level and continue into the boss fight. As soon as you exit Duel by the Dragon, you want to turn around and go behind the level trigger along the left hand side here. A small tip, don't cut early on this wooden plank. Make sure you run to the end and then cut. Otherwise you run the risk of triggering the level and going back into Duel by the Dragon. When I get here, I like to jump twice to make sure I'm grounded all the way in the corner here and again i'm standing just on the right hand side of the wooden plank now from here we're going to drop down and we're going to get set up for world four skip now if you are having trouble landing down below there is a spot up top there where you can ledge grab right above me and drop down from there and it makes landing here a bit easier but when you get down here you want to ledge grab on the bottom wood log and you want to have a very, very small gap on the right-hand side of Sly. So you'll notice to the left of Sly's backpack, there's a small gap before the bigger wood piece along the side. That's exactly where we want to be. So from here, hold down and right on your D-pad. Just keep holding that direction and just hold X. From there, you'll void drown down. And the point in which you want to click X to cancel your Void Drown is you'll see this mountain in the background, just the one singular mountain there. As soon as the top of my screen gets past that, that's when I click X. So right there, I'll click X and launch back up. It is worth noting, don't use fast here because it can affect your speed and distance. And it can give you weird effects with how you're doing the Void Drown. So just be sure to be careful when doing it. When you're in the air and say you're going to land exactly on it no matter what, then you can use fast. But make sure you don't use fast if you're not comfortable with it. And during your void round, definitely don't use fast because it can give you very weird results. Remember that using fast will make things a lot faster. So especially when you're comfortable with it, you want to make sure you're using fast. So it's definitely okay to use fast here. Just dodge his flames here. Then we want to hit him 10 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After hitting him 10 times, nudge up real close with up on the D-pad. Then you basically want to do a reverse super jump. So you, when you're nudged up real close, slide your thumb over X and then square, spam X, and you'll jump up. That's what we call a Grim Panda. And that way we don't get launched back by his belly and we don't have to run all the way back up and avoid his attacks. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nudge up. Spam X. And the spam X is very important there as well. And again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nudge up real close. Spam X. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nudge up. X square, spam X. And sometimes he'll knock you back like this. If that happens, it's totally okay. You just run back up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When that happens, he's on no health at all. Next hit will kill him. So all we want to do here, double jump up, swing, and hit him. And you'll notice that autosave logo pop up in the bottom left-hand corner. From there, you can just click exit level back into the hub world. 
As soon as you get back into the hub world, you can head towards Unseen Foe. Now, Unseen Foe is actually the last vault in the entire game, so congratulations on making it this far. So entering Unseen Foe, we want to immediately grab these bottles off the left-hand side. We can grab those bottles. Some Bentley dialogue will trigger, and there's no way to skip this, by the way, so don't worry about triggering it. Cut to the right. There's a vault right there. After that, we want to kill this guard and grab these bottles. I like to grab one, kill, and then grab the other. We are on a bit of a cycle here because we want to jump up on this fence, jump across, and kill this guard. After grabbing the bottles inside the tower, we want to go across here. Spire jump onto the fireworks stands. And there's going to be one bottle back here. After grabbing that bottle, jump back across. Go across the blue stealth auras. And if you full send it, you can actually make it across that fireworks stand without waiting for it to trigger. We're going to come through this tunnel. You can jump across that guard's light to the far side. And from there, you can just run up and kill the guard from there. Two bottles on the this side. And then there's three on the other, and you should be at 14 bottles leaving this room. This is one of those levels that is really easy to miss a bottle in, because sometimes Sly will end up targeting these little vases instead of targeting bottles. So be very vigilant when collecting bottles in this level. After sliding down the rope, kill this guard here, this guard here, get these two bottles and climb up these trees. There's going to be two bottles on top of these trees. Now, we're going to jump on this little branch hanging off from this tree. Make sure you jump on the left-hand side. If you jump on the right, you'll just slide off. So, ledge grab on the left, and you can do this without a ledge grab as well if you get a good enough jump. Jump across, kill the guard. There's going to be two bottles there. Climb up this pole. Go across the blue spire points. Climb up this pole, and ride across the rope. Now in here, you can use fast in here as well, but be very careful because it's easy to get caught by these lasers when fast is active. Make sure you get all of these bottles. There's going to be three in the corner here, and you should be at 27. Now, something I do want to mention, these hooks that are coming in and out, make sure you don't grab them unless they are inside. Because down below, you are directly above a little rope you can ride on. So if I jump out to try and grab onto the, one of these hooks, I can actually fall down below and land on that rope. So you got to be very careful with when you grab onto these hooks. Make sure you grab on them on the inside. And just like that, there's going to be two bottles over here. And just like the one over there, you want to make sure you land on this platform, then grab onto the pipe. Because just like the hooks down there, this rope is right below you as well. So you do not want to jump from this pipe all the way straight to that pipe. Always make sure you land next to it, then grab on the pipe. Climb up, bounce off the pad, get your last bottle, and then we're going to open the vault. And this is the final vault in the game. Now, we are going to do this one a bit different. If you remember that dummy save we created back after APA, we want to make sure that we use that dummy save. Because after collecting the last vault in the game, we actually have to watch a cutscene. So... Collecting the vault on this file, then loading into another, will allow us to skip that cutscene. So the combination is 667. So we do 6, 7, 6. And you'll see the autosave logo pop up. Now from there, we're going to load into our file that we created earlier. Load into it. After loading into it, we're going to pause, load again and load back into our run file. Because remember, we want to be on our run file. Loading into that file means that we are back on a file that doesn't have all the vaults. So now, loading back into our run file, you'll notice we have that vault as well. And from here, we just want to menu into the hideout, and we can enter World 5. And you'll see that we have collected every vault in World 4 now, as with World 3, 2, and 1. And we're all ready to go into World 5. Congratulations, you guys collected all of the vaults in Sly 1. After Bentley finishes his dialogue, you can menu to World 5. Hold square as soon as you enter Hazardous Path because you want to make sure you break that lock on the door right away. Now, there's not much to this level. It's mostly just an auto-scroller. Basically, you just want to pre-fire all these mines and make sure you're uh, killing those Falcons fast enough and you shouldn't have too many issues at all. So I'm actually going to speed up the recording here 
and I'll see you guys at the end of Hazardous Path. When you load into Burning Rubber, make sure you pause the game and click Restart Level. Doing so will skip a short Bentley dialogue. Once you get into the level, immediately turn around and wait for this slug to pop out. You can actually hit him into the uh, area behind the level, and he'll infinitely fall and never come back to bother you. So for the rest of the level, you only have to deal with three slugs, which is very handy. So this level is just another mini game where it is all RNG depending on where your computers will spawn just like fish and where the fish will spawn or chickens where the chickens will spawn you're kind of just moving around and collecting what you need to collect now one tip that can help you out is you can actually make these slugs take a little bit longer to show up back on the map so the way to do that is make sure you hit the slugs off the middle of the map if you have an opportunity to because hitting them off the middle means that they have longer to swim back. We call the trick where we knock that slug out at the beginning the slug despawn, but we're not technically actually despawning the slug itself. What we're really doing is we're knocking the slug out of bounds so he infinitely falls and has no way to come back to mess with these computers and steal them from us. So we have the same four slugs infinitely in a loop coming back trying to steal our computers. Another thing that's helpful is on the last computer you grab, if you can help it and grab a computer close to the door, that'll be very nice and will save you a couple seconds overall in the end. But then you gotta sit through this short Bentley dialogue and as soon as it's done, you'll be able to go through the door and enter into Daring Rescue and we'll explain Bentley Skip. Once you enter the level, you can pause the game and load your file to skip the cutscene. Now what I recommend you do is on the animation of your file reloading, you can actually use fast and make that go a bit faster. So it looks like this. You just hold triangle, it'll go a bit faster. Now from here, we want to double jump past that spire point, go along these rail slides, and we have two options here. The first option and the easier option of the two is cane jumping off this hook here. You can hook jump, land here and break these and continue on to Bentley skip. The other option and the one I recommend if you're comfortable with cane jumps is again we're gonna double jump past the spire point go along the rail sides but this time on the pole make sure you're all the way up to the top. Now hold directly right, cane jump, delay your cane swing and you can ledge grab there and break the turret as you're falling which will allow you to ledge grab onto that ledge. Now, once you're up here, you want to go to this right pole here, this, this right railing. Now, you'll see a little bit of a bend in the pole. So that's exactly where I want to jump on, and I like to continue jumping until I have the correct cycle. When I jump to this turret for Bentley Skip, I like to land in the front middle. It's kind of hard to show, but you'll see at the bottom, it's like a beak almost that very bottom part of the front, I like to jump there in the middle, but slightly further back. It looks like this. So I land here, jump once, jump over, and jump like that. That was a little bit short, and that's what it'll look like if you get a short launch. If you land in the right spot, you can hold X, jump over, and land on the other side of Carmelita. If Bentley Skip is a struggle for you, I recommend you practice it. It'll get easier and will save you a ton of time overall. But if you have to do hacking, definitely feel free to do that. After getting past this level, you can run into here and run into Temporary Truce. While you run into Temporary Truce, you want to spam X. The reason being is you want to be able to jump. Jumping will allow you to pause the game consistently, so that way we're able to skip this minute-long cutscene that plays here at the beginning of Temporary Truce. Now, this level is going to go a bit fast because Sly is consistently moving, and we have to keep our cycles going. So if you need to slow it down, feel free, because I might go a little bit fast here. So again, we're going to hit load and skip this cutscene, and again, you can use fast to skip that as well. I immediately aim up, start shooting this top piece there, kill this guard kill this guard and while Sly's running I go back to shooting these top glass 
little electrical things up top. Shoot the middle one. Kill the guard. And then while Sly's running, you have a little bit of extra time while he's on this middle section. I like to get these first three done. If I have any extra time, I'll start working on the fourth one. Two Robo Falcons will spawn there. You can kill them, and after Sly lands up top, you're home free. He's just going to keep running, and all you got to do from there is kill these slugs. Now, technically, you do not need to kill the slugs, but it is possible for the slugs to proxy and hit you, and doing so will cause you to die and have to restart the entire level. So I highly recommend you shoot these slugs while Sly's running up top. Sinking Peril is the last platforming level in the entire game. As soon as you get into Sinking Peril, you want to load your file to skip a little intro sliding section where Sly kind of slides in on these wires. Now, you are on a cycle as soon as you get into this level because of the lava that will continuously rise, so make sure you're moving fast enough to beat that lava. As soon as you load, you only have to see this last wire where Sly slides down. You can double jump across and skip that first electric gates cane jump off the second hook run back to trigger these gears break the first two ledge grab the third double jump up and bounce up the wire by continuously spire jumping on top of the wire where you're supposed to slide you can cane jump around that one as well cane jump by holding upright at the top of that pipe here and just holding upright and doing a cane jump will let you grab on to this final pipe in sinking peril. After that, you just got to climb through these last few electric gates. Wait for a second for all of that to fall down because otherwise it's easy to fall all the way back down to the bottom. Land up top here and run into the final boss. You want to pause the game as soon as you enter the clockwork fight because if you wait too long you're unable to pause and you'll have to watch a really long cutscene. So as soon as you pause, hit options, load the game, and load your file. Now this first cycle of clockwork is pretty straightforward. The first thing you have to shoot is his head. So bait in the shots, pre-fire at his head. Up next you have his feet. Bait the shots, shoot at his feet. Next is his tail. Bait the shots, pre-fire the tail, and the last is his right wing. And that's the first phase of clockwork. Now, while we wait for the second phase to kind of play out, and an unskippable cutscene does play here, there's no way we're able to skip it, I do want to say a short thank you for those of you who took the time to watch this video, and I really hope it helped you learn all vaults. This category has been a huge passion of mine. Uh, I definitely still have room to grow as a runner, and I have a lot of things I need to learn about the category, and I'm excited about the future. I'm hoping that this video is able to help you learn the category a little bit, and it helped show you that these longer categories in Sly 1 are a ton of fun. And I hope it was pretty easy to follow as well. Now, one thing I do want to mention about this second phase of Clockwork is you can get something called Purple Rings. Now, Purple Rings are these rings that Clockwork shoots at us here. Now, the rings can actually go behind us hit some geometry in a later part of the level that spawned in behind us and it can actually be launched back towards us and hit us from behind. Now it's a very rare chance that this happens but it does still happen. So if this is your first time playing Sly 1 and you end up having a ring come from behind you, know that's why. Again, they're very, very rare. This next phase is shooting Clockwork's head. And really, this entire part of the boss fight is just follow the rings. If you get a chance to pre-fire, like right here, the one right before the last ring that shoots on that cycle, you can start pre-firing and kill the boss a lot easier. Now, coming up is the final part of the boss fight, and something we call Clockwork Jump, where we're actually able to skip the entire boss uh, section, or platforming section, up until the part where we kill Clockwork himself. So I like to full send this jump, holding upright on the analog. Land up here. Land on top. Make sure you watch his head because he can knock you back very easily. From here, spam up on the D-pad because it'll get you extra hits. And you can kill the boss from there. 
And that's how you do all vaults.